arraignment rights. Uh, we'd like to enter a plea of not guilty. We will waive the reading of the indictment, waive the 24-hour period, and uh, just enter the plea. The audacity, Ariel Castro in Cleveland pleading not guilty to no less than 329 charges of murder, rape, and kidnapping. Accused of kidnapping, Amanda Berry, Gina De Jesus, and Michelle Knight, and holding them inside his rundown home for about a decade on average, along with a six-year-old girl he fathered with Barry. His charges included two counts of aggravated murder, where he's accused of causing the unlawful termination of one of the woman's pregnancies, as well as 139 counts of rape, 177 counts of kidnapping, seven counts of gross sexual imposition, three counts of felonious assault, one count of possession of criminal tools, and you don't even want to think about what those are, but you can't help but think about them. Amanda Berry, the catalyst for all the freedom for the women running, screaming from this house and calling 911. How, how can this man have the audacity to plead not guilty? Could he possibly have a sliver of a chance of getting away with this? For more, we turn to crime specialist Ross McLean. All right, Ross, uh, let's not kid the kidders here. Uh, there's always a reason why a person pleads uh, not guilty. It's usually a, a, a bargaining uh, position. And uh, the lawyer in this sense was actually relatively uh, candid. Uh, the defense lawyer said uh, that we want to spare the state a trial, uh, uh, which would include the death penalty, meaning uh, that's what they want off the table, the death penalty. Here's the question, though. How can any district attorney possibly in a case like this take the death penalty off the table? Well, that's the question. You've read it right here, Charles. I mean, the indictment runs, and this is only for half of the time he had these girls uh, held, runs 142 pages. The lawyer has admitted, as you said, that his client is going to do hundreds of years in terms of his sentence for jail. Uh, Ohio is a death state penalty. They do have it. The two crimes which he has been accused of, which qualify for the death penalty, are the aggravated murders of these, uh, and this is where the argument comes in, of these fetuses, babies, persons, uh, what are they? And what he's looking for is some room to say to the prosecutor, take those ones off the table. It's probably going to be hard for you to prove that this was actually a person, that this is, you know, he's saying, take those off the table and we'll plead guilty and take the rest of our life in jail. Would there be any uh, pressure on the government, in, in this case, to spare these women a trial and to spare the families a trial and to spare the family of, in this case, the bad guy of having their reputation run through the mud over and over and over again? It, would, the, would the politics ever move in that direction, spare all these people the trial? Oh, yeah. There, there's going to be tons of pressure on this. And it really raises the question, Charles, of what... What is real justice when you have heinous crimes like this? Is it the death penalty? Is it going through and seeing that this man is put to death for his crimes? Or is it rotting away in jail for the rest of his natural life? Uh, what is justice? I mean, it's going to cost millions of dollars to do a trial. It's going to be a harrowing experience for the girls to have to go through again. And it's going to cost money. So. And can you actually prove the case? The prosecutor has to look deeply into the case law on this to see that he actually can get a conviction before he goes ahead. If he can't, if he feels, uh, if he and his colleagues get together and uh, come up with the conclusion that the defense lawyer wants him to come up with, that is that getting a death penalty on inducing uh, the child and uh, basically de delivering a, an abortion, as crude as abortion always is, but as crude as it was on that particular day. If, if they feel it's difficult to make a death penalty case based on that event, then I guess they could come to the conclusion that we could spare everyone a trial and give defense lawyer and uh, Ariel Castro what he wants, uh, l life in jail. But before I, before I ask you about all of that, Ross McLean, I just wanna, I just wanna ask you this question. In your opinion, your specialist opinion, do you think it would be extremely difficult? Never mind how people feel about this, but about, it's about the burden that the law has. Do you think it would be difficult uh, to, to make the case that this was murder, capital offense, rising to the level of the death penalty? I'm talking about exclusively the abortion. 
Well, that, that's the part where you're getting into that whole tricky area of when does a life become a life? Because even for Canada, our criminal code says if you've murdered a person, and how are you defined as being a person? And that, of course, is something that's been the height of, of debates. Although, you know, one almost has to believe in these circumstances. There's probably a good case to say when you've got a pregnant girl and you're doing the things that he did to her to force her to give that baby up, you know, man, that's a tough one not to say that that's not murder. I mean, really. But it's also, but it's also fair to say, I'm just sticking with the, with the cold, callous law here for a moment, trying to keep my emotions out of it. Uh, it would be a precedent setter. I don't think that there's ever been a death penalty meted out to somebody who forced a woman to have an abortion. Yeah, on that, I'm not sure, but I think that you're right on that. Otherwise, this would be a much clearer case and they wouldn't be looking at this uh, perhaps negotiation on this, Charles. All right. If there is a trial, one of the most difficult things for people to watch will be the defense lawyer doing his job. And part of his job would be putting these women under a withering cross-examination, going after detail after detail after detail and trying to trip the women up on the stand. Would you want to be in the defense lawyer's shoes doing that? Well, you know, not all defense lawyers are of the same uh, feeling on that, Charles. There's lots who will tell their clients, uh, I'm not going to do that for you. I am not going to take what are clear facts and degrade this person for you or a guy who's going to lose on this. I'll fight for you. I'll do stuff, but I won't go to that limit. There's lots of lawyers that tell them, go get another lawyer or, you know, go to HE double toothpicks for it. There are other lawyers, of course, who would do that, who would go to that length. Uh, I don't think it's really going to come to that. I think somewhere there's going to be something worked out on this one. Uh, you know, the tough part for me is what do the victims feel as justice? They're the ones who really need to have their voices heard in this, Charles. And so often the victims are left out of these discussions. Let's uh, go to something else, although there's a, there's a bridge to build here. Uh, it's a death penalty that a person imposed on himself. Uh, chronic abuser finally committing suicide Obviously, uh, his victim, I say obviously based on what we know, his victim would have wanted a trial, but that's not happening. Give us some, some background on this, Ross. We've got about a minute and a half here. Yeah, this is a gentleman here, the too strong a word perhaps here, who you've got on your screen. The Sun News Network, Network once again is covering the courts to make the public aware of what's going on. Here is a guy with the Children's Aid Society. They gave him two children to look after, one of them a little girl. He abused her, used drugs. She complained. Children's Aid Society did nothing. She ran away. Finally, the guy got charged. He got convicted. He was due in court to be sentenced just the other day for his sentence. And he killed himself at home prior. And the victim feels robbed because the victim says, I wanted to see this guy get convicted and right away in jail, not escape justice. So there's two sides as to whether it's capital punishment or rotting in jail. Ross McLean, thank you very much for the background on that and for helping us out with this awful piece of business in Cleveland. Thank you so much.